We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and sell our brilliant new idea to the world, and although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, uh, not so much. And today, well, you know the score, after the very popular video game kickstarters that ran away with your money videos that I put out last year. Today, I plan on resurrecting this bad boy and adding a little RPG flair whilst doing so. You guys keep asking me to make more RPG related content and for better or worse, here it is. 5 RPG related kickstarters that all got funded asking for a collective $734,400 which they smashed as 33,720 backers basically got robbed of $1,720,147. And the crazy thing is, the majority came from just one campaign. So. Let's not hang about and get into 5 video game kickstarters that run away with your money. RPG edition. Welcome to Slopes Game Room. This is the unfortunate story of 15,824 unaware, unlucky and undeserving backers who unbelievably put an unimaginable $660,126 behind what looked like an unbelievable looking game that was asking for an unreal $600,000 which, as you can imagine, ended up being unfinished, unreleased and was made by unreliable, unhelpful and unacceptable devs that obviously became unreachable and unknown. It's time to unbox the unthinkable, unsung story. Yes, okay, I'll stop that now. Our story begins back in late 2013 when Final Fantasy Tactics creator Yasumi Matsuno announced that he wouldn't be working on one new project, but instead two, both based within his new RPG-like world of unsung story. One being a board game, and one being a video game, both of which would be put out by the end of 2014. Eventually, it was announced that a Kickstarter would be made to fund the game, and it succeeded, earning just over what it asked for. And everything seemed fine, with Playdeck the board game company being pretty decent when it comes to talking with potential backers. The Kickstarter hit its goal just hours before completion, and weekly updates followed. The Final Fantasy Tactics game looked to be quite promising. Eventually, those updates started to get further and further apart as fans start to wonder what the hell is going on seeing no gameplay footage whatsoever, and after the game's expected launch date, some pretty shoddy screenshots got revealed. And shortly after that, gameplay footage gets shown, which also looks awful. Anyway, to cut the story short, a few updates get shown all the way through to the end of 2016. They are running out of money. They've got new investors, out of money again, constant promises of showing the game's development that never happens. Eight months later, all the way into August 2017, it's finally announced that Playdeck are no longer working on the game, and have handed it over to a small game company called Little Orbit, who are well known at making games like these. Okay, okay, that's a little bit harsh, and to be fair to the new company, it does look like they're fully doing a good job restoring the backers' faith in the project, constantly replying to comments and giving quite a few updates since they've taken it over. However, strangely enough, the game has started from scratch, only using the original designs as templates moving forward. And for all those people out there that have backed the game, given up and wanting their money back, tough luck. All the money from the original Kickstarter has gone, and Little Orbit actually had to pay to buy the rights to make the game, although he didn't have to actually pay any significant amount. Little Orbit's CEO said, I can't know the sheer amount of frustration you have endured. We are here to help, but we aren't in a position to do that right now. Please know that we are starting from scratch without the money you actually invested. 
so all of our funding needs to go into the game and delivering this Kickstarter. If we start giving refunds right now, it will simply hurt everyone who backed the project and limit our ability to finish. I suppose the question is, who knows where that original Kickstarter money went? Whatever it was spent on, I'm sure we can all agree it wasn't spent on making this medieval crap fest. Mansion Lord, if there was ever a better example of Kickstarters running away with your money, well, I've never seen one. And because of this, this is easily going to be one of the quickest submissions on the show. So, here we go. November 19th, 2013, this quality little Kickstarter was made, and it looked good. A murder mystery business sim with tile-based world building and turn-based RPG content. On the first day of the Kickstarter going live, it reached a healthy 10% of its goal. The campaign continued to build momentum at a nice steady rate getting regular updates from the developers and even getting greenlit on Steam on December 5th of the same year. Absolutely fantastic news, let's get you funded! Need 14,000 more, spread the word people! Woohoo! That's great news! Still 13 days to go, hopefully we can get quite a way past the funding goal. Later that month, 6 days before Christmas Day, the campaign ended on $30,788 from 1,104 backers of its $28,000 goal. We did it! Over 1,100 generous backers have just made Mansion Lord a possibility. We at Golgum Games thank everybody from the bottom of our hearts. Our dream project will now become a reality. The outpouring of support and encouragement from all of you during this past week has been amazing. In the coming days, we'll send out backer surveys to determine how you wish to receive your backer rewards. Finally, to continue progress towards some of these juicier stretch goals, we will be announcing additional post-Kickstarter ways to contribute to the project. And that's exactly what they did. A PayPal was quickly set up to help get even more funds for this humble little title. Great news! That PayPal link also had a timer on it, and on August the 11th, 2014, the devs gave one final week for newcomers to be able to pledge, and that's it. They're gone. Disappeared. Vanished. No longer contactable and never ever to be seen again. 100% a scam. There's nothing else to it. Nameless developers claiming to work at a nameless game companies that probably didn't even exist. There's no pictures of anyone involved, no address, and absolutely no way of contacting them. Seriously, that is it. A quick get in, take the money, and run before anybody asks any questions. Not the biggest amount of money ever, but probably the most open and shut case that I've ever covered. So, I suppose we should probably move on to the next one, shall we? Here you go, Kickscammer fans. Yet another RPG game that in the beginning looked like it was actually going to be quite good. Aura Tactics needed a humble $5,000, which it obviously got when 874 backers pledged $11,577. What's all this about Aura and Tactics? Aura is a fancy term for elemental magic and the word Tactics is to make sure you know it's a tactical T RPG. Also, we're indie, in that we're not getting paid for any of this. It's a small amount of money, but honestly to me, the game doesn't exactly look that impressive. That's not a stab at games like this, not at all. It's just that the minimal $5,000 isn't as bad as you may think. Plus, they actually stated that they're not getting paid for any of this. The team even go as far as to give off their personal Twitter accounts on the main page for you to reach out to them personally if you wanted to. They was part of the collaborative kicking it forward process where 5% of the money earned goes back into funding other projects. And well, all in all, these guys actually don't sound all that scammy. A cute little project by a cute little team asking for a cute amount of money. 
It obviously worked as the team managed to get over double what they was asking for, for their class swapping chess like multiplayer RPG. Well, 22 days after the campaign started on March the 30th 2012, it hit its goal and the updates were very frequent. But as you would expect, just like every single kick scammer, they started to fall off with the final gap being 2 months long. February the 14th 2013 was that day and the post is actually not all that bad apologising for being quiet by showing off lots of different development bits and bobs. Then it all went quiet and even the Facebook page that was also apparently being used to update fans has since closed down and the Twitter page, well that has less views on it than the DSP video. Well, apart from that one. There really isn't much else to say, they are gone. The comments section is full of angry backers thanking their lucky stars that they only pledged £5 each over the 3 unlucky souls that slapped down half a grand each, and the 16 people that dropped at least 100. Apparently the team got laid off from their 9 to 5 jobs and ended up spending all their time trying to find new jobs. Sorry to say this backers, but that $11,000 wasn't going to keep the team together. And even though they have had some decency to go to the comments and explain the unfortunate situation that they're in, I still think it wouldn't hurt to actually do an official update. Anyway, it's yet again a pretty open and shut case this one. And according to Douglas Miller, the creator of the project, it's actually not cancelled. I hate it when creators say this. If the game's obviously not going to get finished, then release what you've made so far to the backers. And this is evident because it's been over a year since his last update. <sighs> Moving on. Oh, it's coming soon. No it's not. Apparently the Facebook group is the best place to get updates on this game. Oh dear. So Shining Empire shockingly is not just an RPG, the game is a bloody MMORPG. Why am I not surprised? We've covered loads of failed MMOs in this series so far, and this was an MMORPG that needed only $1,400 to make. Yes, $1,400, one of the most expensive type of games you could ever make is asking for almost nothing. But there is a pretty big reason that this got funded so quickly. You see, before it was called Shining Empire, the half-made game so far was originally a fan project called Shining Force Online. However, after it was put out, Sega quickly slapped it down just like they did with Streets of Rage Remake, although weirdly not Sonic 2 HD. But anyway, the game was then moved over to Kickstarter in an attempt to change the recognisable characters and names into something new. And, as it's on this list, it did in fact hit its goal of $1,400 as 116 people managed to build it up to $3,056. You can see where this is going, right? Well, yet again, nothing happened. I'm going to keep this one super short too, because the game got funded super quickly and after it ended, the developer made not one, not two, but three updates and then vanished. Compared to other projects, Yes, this one isn't that horrific as they didn't make that much money, with the worst of the losses being one person who pledged $130. However, it's when you look in the comments section, which again is full of angry backers, where you find one seriously disgruntled backer that goes into detail given as much evidence as possible about why he thinks the whole thing is a scam. You see, not only has the creator done a runner, but the creator's biggest fan, someone who'd been following Arcade County for a really long time, not only never backed the project, but has also done a runner. Yeah, I'm getting a strong feeling that both Arcade County and Ezekiel Kane are not only friends, but possibly the same person used to calm the crowd. So, what can the backers do now? Nothing. They got no choice. Have you noticed how this video doesn't give a name or even show the creator's face? Sorry guys but no sheep action for you today. Oh 
Ooh, this one's ripe and juicy, isn't it? Basically, what we're looking at here is the concept art for the game Project Phoenix, a JRPG that did very well. Very, very well indeed. It needed a heavy $100,000 and completely smashed it by getting $1,014,600 from 15,802 backers. Oh yeah, and there's even a PayPal link, so uh, who knows what they eventually got. Apparently created by several Class A game developers who were responsible for such legendary titles as the Final Fantasy series, Diablo 3, Metal Gear Solid 5, World of Warcraft series, Halo 4, Skyrim, Starcraft 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Valkyrie Chronicles, as well as the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy and um, the Wolverine? Yeah, it probably shouldn't have ended with that one. Anyway, what you got here is basically a super team of creators getting together to create a super game for anybody that likes RPGs. However, as you have no doubt guessed, just like so many of these Kickstarter videos, it is still not released. The original release date was going to be March of the following year, which was 2015. Now to be fair, this sort of stuff happens all the time on Kickstarter, and it's a prime example as to why the big companies have managers in place to help keep video games from slipping. As crap as it is, it's very common. So yeah, this game is no different. It's delayed, currently by just over two and a half years. But that's not the worst of it, and neither is the fact that this is what a $1 million game created by the leading JRPG game designers of the world actually looks like. Oh god. The worst part about all this is that the $1,014,600 from those 15,802 backers is gone. It's literally no longer associated with this project. This is all very recent, so who knows how it's going to end up, but currently it's come to light that the vast majority of that moolah actually got taken. So I scrubbed that, stolen from the Project Phoenix campaign, and it moved over to start up another studio taking almost all of those talented individuals with them. Never has a clickbait title of a video ever been more accurate than this. There was an update not long after that original Kickstarter that ended up saying that the game would have been delayed by three years, whilst they worked on another game. However, they would be using investors' money to do so. A little crappy, sure, but in all honesty, it's not the end of the world. It was only after this new game called Tiny Metal was delayed, on launch day might I add, that Lacey, the marketing and PR manager, took to the game's Facebook page and opened up a pretty gargantuan can of worms. Lacey confirms everything we already said and does not hold back, confirming that that new Tiny Metal project was funded by running a scam over on Kickstarter. And Lacey even admits that the company's CEO asked him to deflect any accusations that this money was from anyone other than private investors, and that he only went to private investors as well as dipping into his own pocket when that Kickstarter money started to get low. So, in short, for anybody out there looking for the TLDR version of this whole situation, all you need to know is that 15,802 backers pledged a whole heap of money to help create a game that they are likely never to see. But hey, at least they got Tiny Metal. Well, that is if they actually go out and buy it. Since this story broke out, that CEO has been forced to respond, and after looking through several interviews with the guy, my mind has not changed. Although he denies the allegations, he says that if Project Phoenix is to be resurrected, then 150,000 copies of Tiny Metal will need to be sold. And how many units does he expect to sell in total when the game is officially released on the 21st of December 2017? A hundred thousand. Yeah, I think it's quite a stretch, especially with the bad press that the game's received before it's even been released. So, um, sorry mate. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas. 
Hey there guys, thank you all for checking out the video. It's the part of the video where I give my usual shout outs to all of my Patreons, but first, as it's Christmas, I want to say a big, big Merry Christmas or whatever it is you celebrate at this time of the year, and thank you all so, so much for supporting the channel this far. I am going to try my very best to get one more complete history video out for you before Christmas Day, but if not, you'll see it a few days after. I will do a proper 2017 rundown on Slopes Game Room at the very end of the year, but hey, I just want to say a big, big thanks and happy holidays to everybody that supported the show up to this point. But of course, a special shout out goes out to Matthew Ritter, Ryan Burford, Pop Goes Rock Band, Ian A. Chapman, Phil Lowlands, Retro to Next Gen, Zane Powers, Gavin Give Me Back My Telly, Creamy Elephant, JL87, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, Ben Hall, Taylor Allman, Bia White, Leo NCL, Sin Killer J. Takikawa, and of course, Tiago Piera dos Santos Silva. If you want to be part of the list, get your name shouted out, get your name shown, be part of the Discord chat where you can share your creations, see exclusive content like let's plays, commentary, how I make my videos and whatever random other stuff I decide to upload, then please click the link that you see on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, whatever you prefer. But for now, this is DJ Slope signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time.